I own a Prusa Core 1 3D printer and I have some frustrations. This video is all about giving feedback and a little bit of venting to Prusa and I hope someone from there is watching. I previously made a video about how I assembled my Prusa Core 1 when it first came in. It took me three days. I showed you my experience assembling something so big with so many parts and that was really rewarding. And it has been six months since that day and I have some things to say. For a quick context, Prusa is a company from the Czech Republic in Europe. It's founded by this guy called Joseph Prusa and Prusa comes from his last name. It's not every day that you see a company coming out of the Czech Republic, but I love to see it. Their printers are open source and actually extremely open source. Their kit was fantastically documented. Their customer service is absolutely fantastic. And one of the biggest things is they are highly reliable and repairable. But I think in the last video, I did not tell you why I got this Prusa. So here's a quick backstory. I was attending a wedding last year in summer of 2025, and I sat on this table with these retired folks. As we got to talk he told me that he in the jewelry business he's been designing printing a lot of stuff and he has a bunch of printers i told him that i'm moving to a new place after the summer and i'm going to be looking for a 3d printer please tell me all about your experiences what do you recommend at that time all i knew was there's a company called bamboo labs his advice was if you care about privacy if you care about repairability get a prusa but if you care about very easy to use really modern looking machine get a bamboo labs print quality ends up being the same but if you care about the open sourceness of a product, if you care about repairability and being able to change stuff, which even today with 3D printers, you do need to do because there are mechanical moving parts and at some point they will fail. So I did say I care a lot about my data privacy. I want to be able to repair things. And as I build my home lab, once I move to a new place, I'll be getting into hardware, building a lot of ideas that I have and 3D printing things. I won't mind having to repair my own machines, which for a lot of machines is really good. So in my six months of using this almost every single day, I have five issues with Prusa and Prusa products. The first issue is a lubrication issue. When you buy the printer, they give you this lubrication tube, which you can use to lubricate the rails where the print bed moves up and down. But the rail where the print head is, which moves left to right, you need apparently a special lubrication kit to lubricate it and not the one that comes in the kit. Apparently those are two separate ones and you cannot interchangeably use them. A few weeks before I reached six months, I was like, okay, let me look into what I need to do for the maintenance part. When I found out that the lubrication kit is totally different from what came in the box, I went looking. I was like, okay, Prusa's website may have something. Let me see which exact kit do I need. Now they do have a lubrication kit you can buy and it was only nine bucks. So I said, okay, nine bucks, five, six dollars shipping, $15 and I can get it pretty easily. But that's where the challenge came in. Their documentation, usually for the printer, was really good. But for this, I didn't have good documentation on where to even put the lubrication. I don't know how much, how many uses you can get out of one tube that comes in the kit. So I said, okay, let me just buy two of them just in case I can do maintenance for the next two, three years if that's what's needed. So it ended up being $17, a few dollars for shipping. No, the shipping was additional $18 to get to me. Lack of documentation and what kit do I need? I couldn't even find it on Amazon. Apparently the compound that they use is available, but on Amazon, a tube like that exists but that whole thing is $80. And that's probably used for like industrial machines. That's who buys it. But Prusa has a special tube that's made for their printers, but you can't really find it. Not even on the resellers could I find that tube. Now I bought it about two-ish weeks before the six months that I was gonna do maintenance on it. So I said, okay, let me buy it two weeks early. It says five to six days on shipping. Even though I'm paying so much, I will order it today, a couple of days for shipping. And then it should be here in a week and a half. No, it took them over two weeks to ship the product. I ordered it on December 8th, assuming it would get here by the 15th of December. They shipped it on the 22nd. And then because it was holiday season and shipping from Czech Republic goes through like multiple countries to get to you, it took additional two weeks to get to me. So it took over a month to get this one lubrication kit, which I've already paid so much for. That's issue number one. Issue number two ties into the first one that I already talked about. The shipping times are almost unreasonable. Bamboo Labs, from what I researched, you could find a part from any of their printers on Amazon, get it to you in two days, anywhere in the US. But for Prusa, you have to buy it. It takes them weeks to ship it. And once they ship it, it takes 
weeks to get here. That is pretty unreasonable for shipping speeds in 2025. So my printer is pretty much useless if a part breaks on it. I'm waiting weeks to print anything. I have a backlog of things that I want to print. It's been going 24 seven. This is the first time it has stopped because I'm recording this video. So I don't get background noise. You're just saying for weeks, I don't have the ability to print at all because the shipping times are so long. And that's not even for buying a whole big printer with hundreds of parts. That was a lubrication kit. You can get replacement parts of Bamboo Lab. Same day for some of the nozzle parts or nozzle replacement kits. And I tested it for their cheapest to the most expensive printers. And for the most part, you can find all of their parts. Now coming to the third issue, what I could do if I have so much printing to do is I could buy a second printer. I could buy one Prusa Core one and maybe I could just get a smaller printer that has a smaller print bed. It's open, but it's cheaper. I could continue using it. The cheapest printer on Prusa right now is their Prusa Mini. The only printer that I could buy where the parts are interchangeable is with the MK4S printer. That printer costs about $700 for a kit or $1,000 for an assembled printer. When I bought my Prusa Core 1, it costed $1,000 for a kit and I guess $1,300 for an assembled version. So if I have to buy a second printer, I gotta shell out another almost $1,000 to get a similar printer. For comparison, the cheapest printer on Bamboo Labs is the A1 Mini. It has a really small print bed, but for a lot of stuff, you don't need a really big print bed. It costs $220 in the US with free shipping. Their cheapest printer is $200. Prusa's cheapest printer is about $500. Now, I wouldn't get the cheapest one from Bamboo because I would want a bigger print bed. So I would get the A1 and that costs about $300. Compare a $300 printer to the one I would buy from Prusa, which costs $700 for a kit. And I still got to put in the time to assemble it. And if I want assemble, it's $1,000. So the difference of $700, I could buy a whole other Prusa for the difference of that price. I am not sure how Bamboo is able to do it, but Prusa has got to figure that out because the price differences is absolutely insane. And then a lot of times I would want to do a multi-color print. So I want different filaments to be used on the same thing that I'm printing. Neither the Prusa Core one, neither any of the printers come with it. You got to pay an extra and that's fine. Even on bamboo, you got to pay extra to get multi-filament, which makes sense. The Prusa's multi-filament, the enclosed version costs $400. But if you don't want to get the fully enclosed, it only costs $40 less. So $360. Compare that to the Bamboo Labs, which is already a $300 printer. It costs $100 extra for the Bamboo Labs to get the multi-filament thing. That was issue number three. Issue number four. We got one more to go after this one. There is no camera included. Could someone explain to me? why a Bamboo Labs $500 printer has a camera that you can use to look into what your printer is printing, making sure everything is going right. And then you can create time-lapse videos from that printer. But on the Prusa, neither do they have a camera that comes installed, neither is there a time-lapse feature for the printer. Why is that? Even for a thousand dollar printer, on Prusa, neither does it come with a camera, neither is there an ability if you buy a separate camera, which is a separate story, that you can do time-lapse videos. Either you can buy the buddy camera from Prusa that you can put in your printer and connect it to power and then it works, but that's additional thing you gotta buy and you never know when it's in stock when it's not, but Bamboo already has that in their hardware built into the printer. The solution from Prusa is a camera that costs about 45-ish dollars plus $20 of shipping. So to add a camera to your printer that doesn't even do time lapse it costs about $65 for it to get to me and then I have to install it and then find additional power source for the camera because you can't just USB-C connect it to the printer so I was like okay let me set out on a mission to build my own so I found a CAD model of the camera that they sell but just the design so I printed the design myself I used brass inserts inside it so I can screw it in I had this very old Raspberry Pi camera it's the model 2 I believe so it's a 10 year old like not a lot of megapixels picture quality is not great but it fits in the same enclosure that costed me about 22 dollars a raspberry pi plus the eight bucks for a camera so ended up being 30 bucks and then the filament that's fine it doesn't cost too much money let's say two bucks so 32 bucks to get my own camera working to give prusa credit they do have the ability to run a script that allows you to connect your camera to the Prusa app so you can see what is being printed at any time, but you cannot really create a time lapse. For that, I had to create a totally separate solution using Claude code for the last two days. And it just got working from the second a print starts, it starts taking pictures every 30 seconds. And then at the end of the print, once the printer says, oh, I'm done printing, the Raspberry Pi understands it, stops the frame capture, takes all of the images that was taken every 30 seconds, combines it into a time lapse. Now I had to build that myself. Bamboo, don't have to do 
that. And I'm not even counting the amount of hours I've put into it. And the Raspberry Pi cannot stay inside of the printer because it gets really hot. It could go up to 80 degrees Celsius at times. The camera stays inside the mount inside of the printer. Then a camera cable is coming out of the printer and then into a Raspberry Pi. And there's no designated spot for it that the cable can come out. And the cables are really fragile. And I'm assuming after my printer prints for a long time, it's vibrating, there will be some sort of cut that will be made into the cable and will stop working. But that was gonna be a problem for another day. And then I just had to jerry-rig the Raspberry Pi into this case and just tape it onto the printer. That is not clean. That does not look good. The camera works fine, but it's not the greatest quality. If I had to get the latest camera, it would on Amazon right now, it's going for $69. Just a camera module, not even anything else. So there's just so much hassle to just get camera footage from your printer. And the final issue, number five. Now I mentioned this a couple minutes ago, I could buy the Prusa Mini Plus, which is a $500 printer. But the issue is a lot of those main functioning parts are interchangeable. So between the MK4S and the Prusa Core 1, the parts are interchangeable. You can just pop the new part in and it will work. But with the Mini Plus, you cannot just change the parts between the Mini Plus and the Core 1. So it doesn't even make a lot of sense to buy a Mini Plus from Prusa for $500 if I cannot interchange the parts between both of them. At that point, I would just buy a Bamboo Lab. It would be so much cheaper than a Mini Plus and it would have all of the nice display and navigation built in. Now I've been bashing on Prusa for a little bit now and I do wanna give them credit where credit is due. Their customer service is absolutely fantastic. If you go on their website and talk to a customer service, they are great. They know what they're talking about. They understand the problems really well. The print quality, I haven't had too much issue with. It prints just fine. If there's a print quality issue, it's usually because I messed up the settings and I just need to fix it again. Everything is open source. I actually downloaded their replacement parts and I printed them myself for the core one. So if something goes wrong, at least for a couple days till they send an actual replacement part, I will still be able to print stuff by just replacing it myself. Another one is nothing is welded or glued. I built this printer myself. It took me three days, but I built it myself. So I understand where things go, what screw goes where, how to unscrew something, take it out, replace it. All of this is very repair. I haven't had reliability issues. Nothing has really failed on me. And I also take care of my printer a lot, make sure everything's clean and lubricated. And the last one that I absolutely love is their privacy focus. If you want to use it locally, you can without the use of any internet. So those are always a great thing compared to the Bamboo Labs who just change the privacy that you have to use their cloud service to use their printer. My current situation is I am very deep into the Prusa ecosystem and I don't want to get a Bamboo just because I'm going to have two different slides it's just two different things to manage and I don't want to do it at my scale. Currently, I am printing 24 seven and I have a backlog of things and I'm always printing. All of these pegboards that you see behind me, these are all 3D printed and everything that's going to hang on them, all 3D printed. Things I'm designing that you're going to see in the next video, all 3D printed. Stuff I sell on my Etsy, all 3D printed. All coming from this one printer. So it works really well. So now you understand if it breaks and I have to wait two weeks, how much trouble I will be in. I have considered Bamboo as my next printer very seriously but I hope their Delaware thing that they're doing building in the US would work out really well and I can get parts much faster and cheaper. But when people like me see the high shipping costs, long times to get the part and no availability on Amazon, it's really hard to recommend it to people. Other competitors just seem so much easier to use and faster to get. There's always so much that someone's willing to pay for privacy and repairability before they just want to get something that just works. If it breaks, get a new one. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.